I taught at a Japanese university for 37 years. Um, and I, uh, when I was a boy, I remember when I was a very young kid in, uh, in England, there was this movie, you know it, perhaps, The Bridge on the River Kwai, and it was always broadcast every year around Christmas or New Year. And actually I got rather bored by it as a kid. But that's all I knew about the railway. Until I was working in Japan and I was involved with teaching contemporary history in Japan, the history of Japan in Asia and this sort of thing, um, I was sent by my university to uh, Chulalungkorn for a year's sabbatical. I was at the Social Research Institute at the time, in 1990. And that was the time when the bones in a sort of mass grave of Asian laborers, many of whom were Tamil actually, uh, but not, not exclusively Tamil of course, had been unearthed in a sugarcane plantation uh, in some private land uh, in near Kanchanaburi. Uh, stories seemed to be uh, totally about Western prisoners, and I started to study about these. Uh, and I, you know, it just became more and more horrific. I ended up writing, I think, some 11 articles in my university journal, and I used to take Japanese students to visit the railway sites uh, about, oh, for about eight years or so, I, I was doing that. So that's my story. Uh, my uh, relationship with this issue. Well, the Japanese mobilized an enormous number of laborers from their colonies. And uh, I don't think uh, that the uh, number of, Malaysi uh, of laborers from Malaya uh, has ever been uh, properly investigated. I have to say, after the end of the war, uh, the Japanese had two weeks to destroy all the documents related to Asian labor. I maybe should mention this. You see, when the war ended, MacArthur, General MacArthur, the, the Supreme Commander or whatever he was, uh, refused to allow British troops to enter Southeast Asia until he had made this grand spectacle of the Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay. And that happened two weeks after the end of hostilities. So the Japanese had two weeks in which, and Thai witnesses can co corroborate this, uh, they were burning papers for two weeks, all along, all up and down the railway. And the smoke uh, from the fires, you know, was going 24 hours a day. And they freely admitted to the reoccupying uh, Allied armies. They freely admitted that they destroyed all the documents related to Asian labor. The, uh, that's the labor they brought from Java, uh, Burmese laborers, uh, Malayan laborers, and all the rest of it. They completely destroyed. And they said that the reason was that although the Japanese government had signed Geneva Conventions on the Treatment of Prisoners of War, Military Personnel, during times of war. They had never ever signed any agreements on the use of civilian labor. And the question of civilian labor was an internal matter of the then Japanese Empire. And the Japanese did not consider themselves bound by any international agreements or treaties. They were, they said they did consider themselves bound for, with the prisoners, and in fact they did keep quite good records of what happened. I mean, it wasn't a very happy story, but they did at least keep records of what happened to individual prisoners, units, where they went, and this sort of thing. But all the material on the Asian labor was destroyed. However, uh, the British, I think it was British commanding general of the uh, K-Force, which occupied the railway along the Thai-Burma border, 
uh, I think it was called a Major R. Campbell, uh, made a record to the British military authorities at the time of his investigation uh, into the railway. And he said that a Japanese corporal in Aporon, that's across the border in, Bur Bur uh, in Burma, had told him, this corporal had been involved in logistics, and the corporal informed him that about 250,000 laborers had been uh, brought from Malaya. Uh, and another 100,000 from Java. Uh, he also claimed that of this total of 350,000, 170,000 had died. Now, this is all in a report in London. Uh, whether the British authorities uh, uh, took uh, any appropriate action, I can't say. I don't know how the report was received. But the report does still exist. Um, this figures with things that we do know. Uh, we do know, we do have a, a rough figure for the Tamil community of Malaya of 100,000. Uh, because after the war, the uh, Indian Congress Party uh, sent a delegation to investigate Tamil conditions on the railway. It was headed by a man called C.S. Sastri, I think. C. C. I, I, I can't remember the exact initials. I think he later became a High Court judge. He speaks in a letter to Nehru of a hundred, a one lakh, a hundred thousand, uh, one lakh of Tamil workers involved in the railway. Uh, so we know uh, roughly that there were about a hundred thousand Tamils involved. Uh, we know from other sources uh, that another railway built in Thailand uh, called the Kra Isthmus Railway, which was also to link Thailand with Burma, uh, I won't go into the details at the moment unless you want me to later, uh, other than to say that only Malayan laborers were used on that railway. Um, and it's estimated that anywhere between 60,000 to 120,000 uh, Malayans were used as laborers to build that railway. And we even have some uh, photos uh, of the workers' camps that were taken just at the end of the war by Sir Andrew Gil Gilchrist, who had been uh, parachuted into Thailand to, to record some of the, the things. Uh, and we have these uh, photos of uh, really uh, terribly uh, desiccated. I, I don't know how you would, you would describe them. You can, you can you can photograph them off the PowerPoint if you like. It, it sort of just describing them makes me feel sort of so sad. Uh, anyway, uh, so we have these figures. We know that there's 60 to 120,000 Malayans involved on the uh, Kra Isthmus Railway. We suspect that there's probably around 100,000 Tamils used. So the uh, Japanese corporal in Aporon, his estimate of 250,000 from Malaya is probably uh, fairly accurate. Uh, and I would think that that possibly represents the amount drawn from here, from Malaya. I did interview, we, di we did meet, and, and he came to talk with my students, a uh, Malayan labourer from Kelantan. Uh, who had stayed behind in Thailand. He came to talk with my students at uh, Nam Tok Station, the, the terminal of the uh, railway at the moment. And he told us these terrible stories, how he was just picked at random with other youths from his kampong and from around uh, Joho, uh, uh, from around Kotabaru in Kelantan, loaded onto trucks, sent to the railway, they were all split up, they didn't, the Japanese didn't like to leave the laborers speaking the same language, uh, and, and all this sort of thing. Um, the, I think you should, it's important to understand that when the Allied prisoners whom the Japanese had to 
some international obligations towards were sent to the railway. They were sent as a military unit. So, you know, they were, they, they, they were the same people who had been fighting together. They all went with their officers and everything else. They all were transferred to the railway. And this military structure, uh, of course, in a sense, um, is important. It gave the Allied prisoners of war, who had a dreadful time even so, it gave them the possibility uh, of uh, uh, a military structure that, 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 that sort of discipline, uh, tr tried to deal with questions of morale, questions of hygiene in the camp, personal hygiene, um, and of course, all military units, as you know, had their own doctors. So there were doctors with the prisoners of war as well. And being soldiers drafted, enlisted uh, to fight the war, all these people were literate. So after the war, we had an enormous number of diaries, memoirs, this sort of thing, all very, very disturbing to read. I mean, I can't sit down and read one from the beginning to the end, even now. And the, the, if you compare the situation of the Asians, uh, most of them were illiterate. I, I mean, they were just rounded up from the plantations here, uh, from fishing villages, from ordinary kampong in the countryside, they were just farmers. They probably had very little education under the British uh, here in, in Malaya. And, and they had no idea how to deal with this situation. 